So welcome everybody 
uh, on this webcast. Uh, today we are going to do uh, purification through the mantra, a uh, little explanation, and also uh, I will guide the practice. So before we guide the practice, uh, I wanted to say a few words. Uh, first of all, um, I wanted to thank uh, Lourdes, who has been uh, organizing this uh, event, webcast, coordinating with all the Sangha members uh, around the world, and also all the translators, I, I don't know exactly, uh, maybe we have 10 or 11 different languages. So I wanted to thank all of you, your effort, joyful effort, and your time. And uh, also I want to thank all the people who are coordinating with the uh, team. So I want to thank everybody. Uh, I am here uh, in California. Uh, at my in my basement, uh, even though it looks like a quite a background sky, and but this is in the basement. It's a uh, six in the morning my time, so I've been up quite some time now. Um, so um, I hope that all of you are hearing the sound uh, good and the image good, and so. Uh, I will now I will begin so we will explain a little bit about the practice hopefully you all of you have received the instruction so generally uh, this practice purification through the mantra is coming from a Shangjun Yinju cycle of teaching and uh, particularly from the preliminary practice Ngondo practice this is one of my favorite practice I love this practice uh, because it's a uh, very uh, simple and uh, very much addresses the issues that all the time we face, particularly these challenging moments in the world today. Um, and also, um, uh, it's not very long, so we can all uh, understandable and also simple. So I hope that um, this practice will be very beneficial and helpful for purification uh, of karma or purifying our karma. So reason why I choose this practice is because I do feel like uh, end of the year that we all need to in some sense purify our karma. And uh, uh, basically when I say purify our karma, I'm also referring to very much uh, that all our relationship with others because all our relationship with others are very important and all the challenges that we face in our relationship with others we hold on things uh, for too long uh, too heavy way uh, we get stuck in our feelings about others our thoughts about others our thoughts about so um, it's very important that uh, people who are uh, you know trying to relate to everybody else you know how do you relate to everybody else um, how you have been relating to everybody else it's very important so each one of us it's important that we look at our own life uh, situation and see what are our relationship with others are uh, and how we can purify that, how if we are get being stuck in certain situations, uh, it's important that we need to do clear them. So, so how we clear them is the only way we can clear them is our sense of ourself, who we are in a particular moment uh, in our life, that sense of self has to be shifted. You know, if you cannot try to change by changing the situation, you have to change the one who is looking at the situation or looking at experiencing the situation. So it's very important we're trying to do that. So in this 
situation here, uh, all of you, each one of us, look at your own relationship with other, whatever karmic purification you need to do. It's important you bring those people in your practices here. And so we, we expand ourselves and we, we're trying to clear our karma in relationship with these people. So I will slowly guide the practice. And uh, so it's important that all of you just gradually follow with me. And those you feel a little challenging to follow the practice and just simply rest uh, in yourself and uh, know that there are a lot of people around the world are participating and practicing with you. So you feel that sense of support to you. Okay? So sit comfortably in five point posture. Draw your attention inward. Feel the stillness in your body. Feel the silence in your speech. Connect with that inner silence. Be aware of the spaciousness in your heart, in your mind. And also feel connected with this, all the people around the world, our cyber sangha. Feel that sacred connection that we are all are connected this moment. beyond time and space.
we will sing Hung three times. Shalom Akar Imagine from the Shalaya radiates pure light all direction and this luminous light touches all the beings and all the people, places. Each time these touches they all dissolve into light and the light dissolves back in your consciousness and in your body so all the people dissolves into the light and the light dissolves into your consciousness all the karmic related places dissolve and these light dissolves in your body. Just continue imagining that, particularly you wanted to send the pure light from Shana Worker to all those people that you have a strong karmic relationship strong, sometime painful relationship. Objects, places with whom, with what you have also a painful relationship, they also dissolve. So basically every people, every thing that you have strong, painful relationship, karmic relationship, they all dissolve into the light and these light dissolves in you. So then out there, there is nothing left. It's just a pure space in the universe and pure light. Just continue. Take your time, continuously send the light. It touches those karmic related people, karmic related places, places and people from which it's difficult to feel okay, free. Now they all dissolve into light and the light dissolves in you.
now we sing or we sound a strong p a sound p is the sound of cutting through a uh, cutting through our ego cutting through the sense of self which is really who needed to be purified who needed to be transformed with this sound p just imagine it clears that and begin to expand our consciousness from very narrow limited bounded to unlimited boundless to infinite as what the nature of consciousness is particularly feel that support from all the enlightened beings the support from all the cyber sangha that we are all connected here we are all helping each other to be free from that ego to be free from those karmic relationship to expand our consciousness just feel that you are sense of self starting with your body and with your mind it's expanding this very moment with this very sacred powerful sound feel your body is expanding right this moment where you feeling sense senses are from your cushion from your chair expanding through the room it's expanding from the house it's expanding out through the walls of the house into the neighborhood it's expanding through the town it's expanding through the state through the country through the continent just keep on expanding that sense of self which is very much tied with your body or you with your mind just expanding 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 those who are having difficult imagining then don't try too hard just allow the practice to happen to you with the power and blessings of collective practice this moment you are expanding be aware of that allow to expand allow to be free continue
continue and feel the support from the sacred cyber sangha, from all enlightened beings, and allow the experience to happen. Now, as you feel your sense of self has shifted, feeling that unbounded quality, unbounded sacred space, you are no longer the same. Recognize who you are, unbounded space, infinite awareness. Like a boundless sky, in the infinite light. Now gradually in this sense of self, look at in that space, those people, karmic related people, particularly a strong connection, karmic connections that you have with people. Last couple of years, particularly this year, if there is Look at those people from that unbounded space, from that the eye of wisdom. You see them differently from this from this boundless view. You feel them differently from that infinite awareness and warmth. They are the same. You have change. From that space, from that awareness, from that warmth, look at those people and feel deep sense of empathy. Look at their challenges. Look at their pain. Be aware of how hard they are trying to change. trying to be better.
there is sense of a suffering. They feel unacknowledged, not loved, loneliness, stressful, feeling weak, feeling lost. There are a lot of things that these people are experiencing that we are not aware because we are too much focused on our own pain. Now you are seeing their pain from that boundless space and awareness. Allow the deep empathy to cultivate. Feel deep and allow the feelings and emotions, whatever is coming, such as if you truly feel empathy, there might be tears. There might be joy, feeling connection to them. There might be some sense of joy, realizing, understanding them better, knowing them better. And whatever emotions, feelings coming out of that, allow. It's a genuine because it's coming from that connection. The awareness of the space is allowing that connection. These experiences are arising from that connection. Feel compassion, caring quality, or feel love. to all these people and particularly people that you are working with. Just feel compassion. Allow the experiences of compassion not only in your mind, also in your body, in your feelings. A strong wish to help them to purify their karma as you feel the shift and little transformation in yourself. We will sing three active elements, mantra of three active elements, the fire. As we sing Ram, imagine like a volcanic fire, like a strong wisdom fire comes from that infinite space and burns all the karma of all those people that you are seeing this moment and purifying all those places where these people are, burning them, purifying their old karma, the karmic relationship that you have with them.
just continuously feel it's purifying all the karma. Now we sing the air element mantra, Yang. Imagine the, the huge wisdom windstorm comes from that sacred space and it's clearing, blowing away all the negative karmas of these people and these places. Again, those of you who are feeling a little difficult to imagine, don't try too hard. Just feel the collective power of the practice. Trust it's happening in you as we all are doing. It's happening. The last mantra, the sacred mantra for the water element, Mang, as we sing, just imagine a flood of wisdom, water comes, and washes away all the karmas in those people, in those places. Ma Now feel in that vast space all those places and people I purify their karma with the wisdom fire, wisdom air and wisdom water. 
they are more clear, more purified. Now, as we sing ah three times, imagine from that infinite space, from the source, countless luminous ah, the sh shower of like raindrops of ah, luminous ah drops down and it touches all those places and people. Every time it touches one person, that person illuminates transforms into light, a being of light, like a shallow worker, like a clear sky and clear light. Anytime it touches a object, a places, a possessions, a business, which are very strong karmic related, just imagine those are touches those objects and places and transforms into a light. Continue this imagination, this visualization, and again also trust as we collectively doing it very powerful way, those who are participating in this meditation, it's also happening to you, regardless of you're trying to put too much effort. So don't put too much effort. Just for a moment, rest in that unbounded space within, with the infinite awareness. Rest like a child resting in the loving arms of mother. With the full trust, feeling sense of connection. And from that connection, feeling all the nourishments, feeling love, feeling protection, feeling sense of a company. Feeling safe. 
You are that child, the inner sacred space is that mother. Just for a moment, rest in that space and light. Now we all sing together Purification Mantra. Oh, 
Okay, so um, you can slowly open your eye. If you're closing your eye, just, just it is always uh, very beautiful sometime to allow the experiences happen to us with a sense of trust to enlightened beings, to trust to the collective forces and energies which is beyond us, to allow them to help us, rather than trying to always be in charge, trying to control the situation. So it's always sometime to let go of that. But of course, sometimes it's also helpful to be very engaged. Uh, when one is able to do that, one is clear enough to do that. Now, as you can see in this practice, it's a very powerful and very simple. And most importantly, in this practice, there's a two elements, which is, uh, I think, the key, uh, which is the wisdom and the compassion. The wisdom part of the practice is very much with the sound pit when one really uh, allow to expand oneself, uh, one's consciousness and one's body. When one is really able to do that, you really feel your sense of self from very narrow, from very limited, very local to non-local unlimited, boundless sense of self, both in your body and in your mind. When that happens, you feel different. You see different. That is the part of the wisdom, part of the exercise and practice. You see different. You see the people that you, uh, karmic-related people, that you, feel, that you see they are problematic. Maybe you feel different. You change the feeling. When you feel they are painful, you begin to feel less pain, feeling more open. The places you feel you are very stuck, you begin to feel a change that you don't, you're no longer feeling being stuck. So you are feeling open, more open, greater openness, or sense of boundless openness. 
So that's the wisdom part. When we do feel that, when we experience that, in that space, our relationship to the things and people change. So people that you are seeing in that karmic related people, in yourself, what do you see them? They are different people. Maybe the person that you have never seen before. You have always seen a problematic person, but now you are seeing somebody different. Somebody who is trying hard. Somebody who is trying to love, trying to be responsible, trying to be stronger, trying to get more clearer. They're trying. They're suffering. You are seeing their suffering, their pain. First time, maybe sometime, it could be first time that you're seeing their pain. From that space in your heart, when you see somebody's pain in that deep, you begin to open your heart. You begin to feel deep sense of empathy. You begin to feel compassion. You begin to feel love. So that sense of boundless openness, that, that wisdom allows the experiences of compassion. A genuine compassion arises from that wisdom. Otherwise, sometimes we can experience compassion that might be very limited, a local, a group personality, a tied with some sense of uh, a more subtle ego, more, more, more elegant ego, more smart ego. But when you genuinely feel that sense of compassion and empathy from that space, it's far more powerful. So when you begin to feel that space and when you begin to feel that sense of compassion, your relationship already is changed, transformed. That means your karma has already purified or is purifying. Because karma is nothing more than traces of actions in our deep consciousness, the patterns you cannot think differently than you used to think. When you're worried about something, you cannot imagine stop worrying. When you're angry at somebody, you cannot imagine not being angry at somebody. The pattern of getting angry again and again and again, those are karmic conditions, karmic patterns. But one can always trust oneself that, that you can change. Always you can change. Every difficult situation that you are in, you trust yourself that you can change. That you can be free from that. No matter how difficult it is, how challenging it is, but that sense of trust should be always there that I can change with the help you are receiving those help and that sense of help that you can take with you after our practices as we come out of these meditation and practices if your sense of feeling has changed toward those people then I would encourage to all of you, if, if genuinely feeling more open and some sense of more warmth and qualities are manifesting, I'll encourage you to allow if any expressions feeling taking place, allow them. Uh, expressions of gratitude somebody towards somebody. asking for forgiveness towards somebody, 
thanking somebody, expressing your love towards somebody. Whatever the experiences of expressions are coming, it's important to allow that to come. They might have a, some strong, direct impact in others' life too. So just for a moment, draw your attention inward. Now I will take uh, some questions uh, from people and uh, so I hope this practice was uh, beneficial and so we have uh, uh, some minutes left so we can uh, have some questions. So how many uh, country participants okay yeah we have uh, about uh, 700 computers around the world and uh, I am sure many of uh, you are watching as a group and um, some are like us here very early in the morning. Probably some places it's in the evening. So uh, ability to do this practice like this has been a miracle, a wonderful experience for me. And I, in fact, uh, you know, I uh, usually last time we have a lot of help uh, broadcasting this and this time for some reason we couldn't have all those people come together so I decided to take in charge not only teaching here and meditate guiding meditation but also a technician here so today I'm in control with the technical part too so uh, um, I hope that some somehow it will be so easy that you know we don't have to kind of get tension so much because uh, trying to get ready for this uh, webcast was a little bit, um, uh, how you say, I, I began to lose my little stillness and silence and spaciousness. <laughs> so, but I hope that it becomes so familiar so that it becomes very, very natural, natural way to do it and so that uh, that there's more more fre frequent connection with everybody through this uh, means. Okay, so Polly, we have do we have some questions? When you what? Ah, okay. So, so the question is, uh, <clears throat> in the sense of uh, a boundless space, is it good to practice for yourself? Of course, uh, this practice that what we are doing here, it's it is for yourself. So, 
uh, even though you are doing for other people, it is for yourself because uh, other when you have a problem with the other people, it's not a problem of other people; it's your problem. When you feel pain with somebody, it's not really somebody's pain so much; it's your pain. When you feel conflict with somebody, it's not it's so not somebody else's conflict; it's your conflict. Anything that you are experiencing in your mind and in your body, unfortunately, it's your problem. So when so when we are practicing, uh, when you are practicing, when we are saying, for, for example, with a strong sound pe, you are expanding sense of consciousness. Of course, you know you can say that uh, some people learning a logic, epistemology for thirty years and trying to have a very sophisticated reason to prove that everything is em- emptiness. And uh, and then finally have some glimpse of experiences of emptiness. Maybe sometime even never have experience, or they don't believe they have experience. Here we are saying one sound pay you experience that emptiness. Of course, it's not that easy. But on the other hand, it's not impossible. I think that the possibility is there. With that, if there is trust there, if there's a connection there. And with the sound pay, you do feel some degree of expansion of yourself. You are feeling expansion of yourself. When you're feeling that, it allows to see and feel differently your world that you're experiencing. When you do feel the shift and change, again goes back. You are feeling the change, and you are experiencing that space. You are experiencing that joy. When you do feel that. You are impacting other people through your shift within you, because whenever we change, we allow other people to change. Whenever we don't change, we expect other people to change. You know, other people don't change. Probably, we all have many experiences that in our life, we expect somebody to change for many years. They haven't changed. Why they haven't changed? Because you haven't changed. So it is about us changing. And allowing other to change. The question is: A young boy, a teenage, uh, who is uh, suffering. With cancer, and uh, is it his karma? And can we help? Yes. The answer is yes. Any time, a young boy, old people, any time when we f- get sick, even a moment of a headache, even a moment of anxiety, they all are related with our karma. It's the no experience that we can have, which is not related with karma, our karma, unless we are enlightened being. So, do can we help? Of course, we can help. We can help by bringing that child or any people, other people like that, in our practice. So you're bringing in that space, unbounded space. Let's say, particularly, uh, a child. Uh, a parent of the ch- child, so the suffering that parent parents are experiencing, of course, sometimes it's very difficult to find clarity what to do with the child, what treatment to do. Maybe there's a lot of conflict informations our doctors are giving. So it's very difficult to say to make a decision. You need a clarity. Sometimes you feel very weak. You feel like、uh, giving up. You need a strength. Sometimes you feel very lonely in the situation. You need a support, friends. You do need all those experiences. So, in some sense, it's very important through one's own practices, help oneself to help others. So, in the situation, parents need a lot of help in those moments. We can bring the parents in our practices. And the children need the help. We can bring the children in our practice. Yes, and I encourage in this la,、uh, this practice, we dedicate to all those people like that child and other other people, 
and also in next se few sessions that we have practices we will bring all these people in our practice yeah Can you repeat, please? So the question is that uh, um, somebody is having a lot of emotions, experiences, and uh, crying. And the question is, should I come back to the practices, or should I uh, just continue feeling what I'm feeling? So, you know... In the practices, of course, as I said, allow, because that if experiences are genuine, not a tears, crying is if sometimes it's not very easy. Not everybody know. Not everybody is able to cry or not everybody is able to feel sadness or able to feel joy, able to feel connection. And the reason why people are not able to experience this uh, sadness or joy or emotions, because they are blocked. Because they are blocked in their karmic condition, they are blocked in their identity. Like, for example, if somebody, I'm angry at somebody, I'm not able to feel their pain. Therefore, I don't feel compassion to them. I feel anger toward them. They don't have a place in my heart. When I open my heart, there is a place for them in my heart. I see them differently. I see their pain. When I see their pain, maybe sometime more than my pain, oh, I realize, wow. They have more pain than I do and I'm expecting them to be happy and I'm expecting them to help me. This is the time me to help them. You open your heart like that. You have different new thoughts coming in. When you feel that, your emotions comes up. These emotions are genuine. So I encourage to allow these emotions. But at the same time, to feel connected to the practice and kind of come back to the practice by allowing emotion and coming back to the practice. Balance both. The question is how many times we should actually do this practice. I would encourage to do this practice every time you need it. And I would encourage to pe people to do to take some, uh, because at the end of the year, take, take a weekend off. Uh, take a, a week off, uh, find, a, uh, find a way to do these practices and uh, to a very concentrated way, very dedicated way. Maybe you can say, I will do this practice for one week and I will recite the purification mantra 100,000 times. Make some sense of deep commitment to yourself to do this practice and then do it and uh, work with all the things before end of the year and then just start with a really, really good, fresh fresh year, when you look back, you say, oh, I, you know, do I feel negative toward anybody? No. That would be a wonderful way of beginning. Rather than always thinking about, oh, I, I'm going to do this, do that, some actions. Just change your past. You know, many times people say, oh, I'm going to do the exercise this new year. I'm going to eat differently. I'm going to do this and that. Uh, they, they plan to, they plan to, planning to do something different rather than changing who were who are them in the past. So if you don't change how you've been, how your character, personality, your condition of the past, forget about changing your future. And you you might have tried many years by trying to change something and it didn't work. Reason why it didn't work? Not because you didn't plan, because you were you didn't change. So the same person will not do different. Same person will do the same stuff. Same person who is addicted to the food will eat the same way. Same person who is addicted to worry will worry continuously. Same person who is angry at people will continuously be angry at people because it's the same person having good plan. Bad person with a good plan doesn't work. So it's important to change yourself. So I encourage you to do that. And as much practice as necessary, do it. Okay, so this is the this is the last question. So uh, please please go ahead.
So, the question is how to work with this severe trauma. So, it's a very difficult uh, question uh, to answer because each time the circumstances are different. So different situation, different people are different, dealing with different things. My simple advice and suggestion is whatever circumstances that you are facing, try to be open to that situation. As I always say, just take three pills. Feel the stillness in your body, silence in your speech, the spaciousness in your heart, bringing your attention and awareness inward toward your body. So trying to, I think, trying to feel open to whatever the situation is. And, and sometimes maybe we feel like, oh, it's really difficult to open. It's really difficult to change this. I know like there are moments I feel that also. Then I realize that, oh, I, I have a thought which, which is giving up which says it's impossible to change this. It's my thought is giving up. And I recognize I'm giving it up. So I, I, as moment I recognize I'm giving up, I'm saying, no, I can't change. So then sense of trust and strength sh should come back in that space if you hold that space for a little longer, that sacred space. Okay, so... Um, so we are uh, practice uh, begins nine. What is it? So uh, ten forty-five New York time. And the next session is ten forty-five New York time. And so uh, then uh, Marcy is leading the practice. And so we will see you a uh, little later. See you back, and um, thank you, everybody.